Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today, let's do a little bit of a microphone shootout. This is gonna be less about the specific brands and models and more about price point. The question is, and I get this a lot, and this has been the question since I ever got into recording, is can a really affordable or cheap microphone compare to one that cost 10 times the price. So I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison so you can hear two different microphones, not just hear the differences, but then see what we can do with post-processing to maybe get them a little more equal. So I'm gonna be comparing two microphones. I'm gonna be comparing a Behringer C1, which I got for just under $60 US. I think I paid $58 at Sweetwater, my favorite place to buy gear. And then I'm gonna be comparing that to a Neumann TLM 102. And this is one of the more affordable Neumanns uh, and it retails around $700 US. So more than 10 times the cost of the Behringer. And so I'm gonna sing the same song into both. And I know it's not gonna be a perfect test because it will be a second pass of the recording, but we're not going for perfection. We're just going for real world, normal people listening to two recordings, same performance, same person, same room on two different mics. And can we tell a difference? So we'll hear the difference between the two and then we will jump into Pro Tools and I'll start playing with some plugins to see if we can get them to sound a little bit closer to each other. So first I'm gonna sing into the Behringer C1. Again, this is a large diaphragm condenser microphone and I'm about a foot away from the mic and uh, let's see what this sounds like. And now I'm gonna do a pass, the same part of the song with the Neumann TLM 102. Okay, and just a clarification, because I don't think I mentioned it earlier, these mics are both just plugged directly into my Focusrite Claret interface, just right in using the built-in preamp with just phantom power turned on. <laughs> All right, so here we are back in Pro Tools and the dark blue track here is the C1, which is the Behringer microphone, the $60 mic. And then the light blue is the uh, TLM 102, which is the Neumann, which was the $700 microphone. So let's just take a listen um, to them back to back in solo mode. And I know what really matters is context with the mix, but let's just dive in and get in the nitty gritty of the individual mic. So here's the uh, C1. I am about to break It's getting heavy on my shoulders and I just can't hold the weight And here's the TLM I am about to break It's getting heavy on my shoulders and I just can't hold the weight Right, very different tone 
Seems like the C1 is brighter. I am about to break. Um, what we'll do is let's turn the clip gain up a little bit of the uh, TLM here, 1 dB. So it's a little more comparison. I am so ashamed. Here's the C1. I am so ashamed. All right, and here's the Neumann. Seeking pleasure from whatever, and I just can't say she ate. C1. Seeking pleasure from whatever, and I just can't say she ate. So you already notice that actually the C1 sounds a little more mixed. And you're, you're going to notice this if you haven't already. A lot of uh, budget microphones, and not even just budget microphones, but a lot of uh, microphones sub $500 um, US have an EQ curve that bumps a little bit in the upper mids, and they're all different. And that can be a good thing depending on your voice, or it could be a bad thing depending on your voice. So right now, it's like I like actually the sound of the cheap microphone better because it sounds a little bit more EQ'd. Seeking pleasure from whatever, and I just can't say she ate. For the Neumann. Seeking pleasure from whatever, and I just can't say she ate. Sounds a little more um, muddy, but that actually can be good. That's a nice warm tone. It's just not as clear. Let's get to this section of the song here, and then I'm going to mess with some plugins. But you don't know what it's really like. Neumann. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. And then the C1. To be a shadow on the inside. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. TLM. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. I hear, okay, I like the brightness of the C1. Um, that already sounds a little more forward. Then the TLM, I would actually want to brighten up the TLM, but I like the thickness of the TLM. It doesn't sound as thin or as harsh or verging on the, the edge of harsh. So there's qualities of each that I like. So let's see if we can just play with some EQ, um, some compression, maybe something else, see if we can get them to sound closer to each other. So for, first, let's start with the TLM. I, I kind of want to uh, brighten that up a little bit. So let me grab, we're going to use a stock EQ here. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. What if we play around with this? But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. But you don't know what it's really like. So that's around 6K. What if we just give it a little bump there? That's about 4 dB. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on. Take it off. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. That's a little cleaner. And let's see if we can go down to the, the low mids and see if there's just something that I don't quite like about the TLM, honestly. Let's take a little listen here. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. But you don't know what... Hmm. 300. Let's see what it sounds like down here. I am about to break. I am about to break. 230. I am about. To Sounds kind of cloudy and let's, what if we notch that out? I am about to break. Take it away. I am about to break. On. I am about to break. A little better, right? Uh, let's compare it now to the C1. I am about to break. The TLM is still a little cloudy deep down. I am about to break. I'm just going to roll off some of the ultra lows of the high pass here. I am about to break. It's getting heavy on my shoulders and I just can't hold the weight. And then let's do a little bit of a shelf boost, actually. Let's just bump up some of the ultra highs. I am about to break. Compared to the Behringer. I am about to break. 
I am about to break. Let's get to the loud part. But you don't know what it's really like. C1. But you don't know what it's really like. Okay, so let's go to the C1 real quick. Little bit on the harsh side. So now I've got an EQ on the cheap, cheaper C1 microphone. But you don't know what it's really like. Let's take out some of the, let's find the harshness and just dip it down just a smidge so it's not gonna be too harsh. Let's see where it's really starting to go crazy. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow. 5K is where it could bite just a little too much, at least with my voice. So what if we tuck that down a little bit? But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. A little better. Compare it now to the uh, TLM. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. So now that's a little less harsh, the, the cheaper one. It's still a little thinner than uh, the TLM. We can do a little bit of a bump. Let's see if we can actually thicken it up with just some EQ. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. 170, what if we gave it a little bit and let's smooth out that bump and make it a little less. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Take it away. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. They're a lot closer, I think, than where they were. They're still not nearly exactly the same, right? They're two very different sounding microphones. Let's see what happens if we compress them. Let's go ahead and just get a stock compressor here. And let's go ahead and pick a two to one ratio. And let's play with this guy. I am about to break. It's getting heavy on my shoulders and I just can't hold the weight. Let's set it for the loud part. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. You don't know what I've really done or the monster that I've become. Yes, I can feel the pressure. Let's hear it in the mix, see if the compression's feeling good. I am about to break. It's getting heavy on my shoulders and I just can't pull the weight. Mm -hmm. I am so ashamed. All right, and let's set the compressor for the Neumann. I'm just going to drag the same compressor over and we'll tweak the settings to the loud part on the Neumann. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. I am about to break. Yeah, pretty similar. All right. So now I'm going to listen to each of them in context with the mix with EQ and compression. I am about to break. It's getting heavy on my shoulders and I just can't pull the weight. Neumann. I am about to break. It's getting heavy on my shoulders and I just can't pull the weight. Let's go to the loud part of the song. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Neumann. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. I'm still feeling like the uh, Behringer's a little bright. Let's see what we can do here. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. But you don't know. But you don't know what. But you don't know what. 
Yeah, so maybe just take that EQ down a little bit more. Very cool. Now, if you wanted to take it a step further, with cheaper, thinner mics, if you have any kind of tube or tape saturation, that can really help. So for example, if you were to grab, so let's say um, Stephen Slate's stuff, he's got a really cool collection, the virtual tube. And there's one in particular, the London tube, I believe, that I like. It really is cool. And um, what we can do is do some, well, we can try the preamp versus console, but let's saturate it a bit. This is usually a little darker. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. You don't know what I've really done or the monster that I've become. Before. But you don't know what it's really like. After. But you don't know what it's really like. It adds a little bit of saturation. And then if we play with Revival, we can add some thickness to it, even literally says thickness. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Take them both away. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. But we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and add the trimmer. Just take it down a little bit because it's getting a little loud. And now let's um, add one more thing. Let's add some tape saturation. Again, this is another one from Stephen Slate. Just gotta be careful because it can make it louder. So let me separate this. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Take it off. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. All right, so now we can compare the two. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Neumann. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. Behringer. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. A lot closer, I think. And if you take away all the plugins on the Behringer, do before and after. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. See how thin it was? But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Now it's thicker, a little less harsh, a little less brittle, and a lot closer to the TLM. And it helps. And then put it in context with a mix. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. The final thing is if you wanted to add some effects to it. Again, I'm trying to be real world because on a song like this, I would probably put it through some slap, right? So if I wanted to grab, let's say Echo Boy, um, let's just go ahead and put it. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Let's do a low cut and a high cut. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. Nothing but a vapor or a mist that blows away. You don't know what I've really done or the monster that I've become. It's right, so put that in context with a mix. Pretty cool. But you don't know what it's really like to be a shadow on the inside. If we put that same effect on the Neumann, compare the two. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. But you don't know what it's really like to be shadow on the inside. Very interesting, right? So when you hear how those microphones evolve over some EQ, some compression, some saturation, uh, and then eventually some delay or reverb, you could choose either one of those microphones if you didn't know 
which was which or that they were even that much different, you would probably just say, this mic's a little brighter, this mic's a little darker. And what's funny about microphones is that we tend to process them like against their weaknesses and towards what their strengths could be. And I find that we tend to bring them all like almost to where this ideal vocal sound is. And so you saw with the Neumann, I felt like it was too dark and a little muddy. So I'm scooping out some mud and trying to bring up some of the brightness. And other than that, I felt like it was good. It wasn't harsh. It just was a little closed off. Whereas the Behringer was nice and bright and forward and sounded mixed, but maybe a little too mixed, right? Could could verge on the edge of harsh. So tucking some of that 5K, 6K down, trying to thicken it up a little bit because there wasn't much thickness there like the Neumann had. So I'm adding some tube saturation and some harmonic exciting and some tape saturation and a little bit of a bump in the low mids with EQ and compression to just move both of them forward. And then by the time you put both of them through a little bit of a slap delay, they sound very similar, certainly in the mix, certainly both passable. So what's the point of all this? The point is, as always, to prove to you that the microphone isn't the bottleneck. If you have a $700 microphone and you like it, great, use it. If all you have is a $58 microphone like the Behringer C1 or its big brother, the Behringer B1, that's $100, which was my very first microphone that I purchased, still own it and have it and use it today, then use that. Just know that what you hear coming out of the speakers is going to determine what you do to it. So if it's a little bright, a little harsh, tone it down a little bit, clean it up a little bit, right? If it's a little dull, a little muddy and not bright enough, brighten it up. The point is, is we are going to bring whatever we have a little closer to what it should be and you can get by with a $60 microphone just as much as you can with a $600 or $700 microphone. Now, before you go, I wanna give you something. If you are in the market for a microphone, and you don't know which one to get. I mean, you could get either one of those. Those are both great microphones. But if you wanna compare a few different microphones and see some ones that I personally recommend at different price points, because I don't know your budget, then I wanna give you my studio gear guide. It's absolutely free. These are a bunch of quality pieces of gear, microphones, audio interfaces, software, speakers, headphones, everything that I recommend and can vouch for in different price points. So you know what your budget is, you know what you need, you can go through the gear guide and find a microphone in your budget that I recommend. These are all pieces of gear that I either own, have used before, or I trust the company and everything they make. This is not an affiliate link, I don't make any money if you buy these pieces of gear through the link. I linked everything from Sweetwater, but they're not affiliate links. You don't even have to buy them from Sweetwater. I don't really care where you buy them. I just have finally put together all my favorite recommendations. I update this every year and I wanna give it to you for free. Just go to studiogearguide.com, the link's below, and then you can get some recommendations on whatever you are in the market for. And hey, if you've been watching this, I'd love to know which of the two microphones did you prefer? You saw what they sounded like when they just came straight out of the box. And then you kind of saw where we took them with some plugins. Um, even after those plugins, which of the two mics did you prefer to your ears on your speakers in your system? Let me know with a comment below, either the Behringer C1 or the Neumann TLM 102. Other than that, have a great day. Make some great music. Don't let gear hold you back. Whatever you got, use it. Make a great song with it and have fun. I'll see you on another video real soon.